Hey folks, okay, uh, at this moment here, uh, Hurricane Florence is kind of bearing down on the East Coast, uh, so we'll probably get, uh, we're outside the flood range, but we'll probably end up losing power here in a few days. So I thought, hey, before I drown in the waters of the Chesapeake Bay, uh, go ahead and make one last tutorial. I hope this is a fitting epitaph. Nah, that's not going to happen. I'm going to be fine, but uh, don't worry about me. But anyway, time for a new tutorial. Uh, here's a shot from my upcoming fan film. Got some TIE fighters that get hit by some lasers and explode. All right. And so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you just how to do the compositing of this uh, these uh, laser blasts. Here's the original shot without the... All it has is the TIE fighters getting exploded, okay? There's no effects or anything. All right, so what I did for this explosion in the first pass was, this was all done in Blender. Um, I just have a Starfield background. And then I have a, um, for this TIE here that's about to get hit, when it's time for this thing to explode, I just scaled this down to zero, zero, zero. So it just completely disappears. And then I have a second version of this object that's been broken up into pieces. And I didn't want to do a lot of finagling with the physics engine and stuff. So I just hand animated those big chunks flying away. All right. You can see them, those few chunks there flying away. I did that by hand. And then I created a particle system to add some shrapnel and some, some debris. Uh, I just had like a little uh, shard box object and I had a lot of randomness to the size and the rotation of movement and just had that emit particles for a few frames. And of course, the last thing I have is bright light that kind of flares for just an instant. And then, of course, later on in the uh, compositing, I went in, I had some explosion effects from Digital Juice that I just kind of uh, used and put over top of there and that gave it the final effect. Um, but of course, we need something to show that we're they're getting hit right now. They're just they're just exploding for no reason. So, um, so what I did was uh, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to composite a uh, pre-rendered video or a strip of images into a Blender scene. So here is the the Tie Fighter video I showed you before, and all I did was uh, animate some laser blasts hitting these guys. All right. So uh, just a quick recap of that, even though you can refer to the first video for a more in-depth tutorial. If you go and hit N here to bring up this panel, there's a background images uh, drop down, And then you just simply go ahead and uh, browse for your uh, movie file. And I found that MPEG-4 works fine. And turn off camera clips so you can see it, as you can see there. You need to turn off camera clip or else you won't be able to see it. Uh, then you can go into your um, video sequence editor, add that video as an image strip, and then add the current scene over top of that video and set the blending mode of that uh, strip to add. All right, so everything that uh, is in the main scene is gonna include over top of the, the um, pre-rendered video, all right? Um, and then, of course, I think we went to this compositing tab. We went down to film uh, under rendering here. So film, we turned it to transparent so we could be able to see through. All right. So um, to actually composite the laser blast, the lasers themselves are extremely simple. As you can see here, we'll go to the beginning. Um, they're just simple um, what, um, cylinders, very low res cylinders that I tapered down and welded the edges together or the ends together and just added a very uh, simple subsurface modifier to it to give it a little bit of a uh, um, little bit of a smoothness. If you hit T and you go under shading and hit smooth, we don't want them to be facet, we want them to be smooth. All right. And uh, then I just duplicated them a few times, uh, gave them a material and emission material uh, because we're not concerned with the scene being, there's no real depth to the scene. We're just animating to what's on camera. So these things are not actually moving that far away and stuff. So the default emission strength of one is fine. Um, so of course I just animated these to what's on camera. So as you can see here, uh, this one here looks like it's actually moving very far into the distance, but it's not, it's moving across the scene a relatively short amount. I'm just scaling it down. And so of course the advantage to doing the lasers later is that you don't have to worry about their position in 3D space relative to all these objects. 
especially since the distances of these objects moving around is, is quite large sometimes. So this way, all you have to do is, is animate it to what looks good on camera. So you can just move this, slide this across the screen and scale it down and it looks like it's traveling vast distance into the background. All right, and then right towards the end, when they get to the end of their life cycle, when they've hit their, ob their target after a few frames, they just scale it down to zero, 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 and then they disappear, all right? So, um, so that's the actual animation part of that. Now for the actual compositing, now we could render this right now uh, with all the settings that we have, and we would get something. We'd see this red uh, blob here and um, this red laser object, and it would be going across the screen towards its target. It would be fine, but we need to give it a little extra something to make it pop out of the scene. So if you look at this compositing, you can see that actually the laser has a glow around it. And in fact, it's kind of semi-transparent. It gives it an extra extra little depth because if the laser is completely opaque, it looks very fake. It looks like a flat, um, like the old Fisher-Price models that uh, shot um, back when you were allowed to have models shoot projectiles. There's little plastic projectiles, it looks like. But this is composite in the scene. It's semi-transparent, has a glow around it. So what we need to do in order to achieve that effect is uh, go to the Object tab for all the objects that you want to have this glow effect. Go to that tab right there. And under layer, under Relations here, un beneath Layers, there's a thing called Pass Index. And set that, in this case, I'm going to set it to 1. It's the only thing that is going to be changed. Actually, this is the only thing in the scene. I could have left it at 0. But uh, uh, usually, you're going to have multiple layers in the scene and stuff. So I set everything I'm going to composite and put a glow effect on to a Pass Index of 1. Then you go over to your Render Layers tab. And then under Passes, you activate Object Index. And what that's going to do is, if you were to switch to your Node Editor and go to Compositing, all right, for the background, uh, once you've enabled that under Render Layers here, you'll see that Object OB, or Index OB, Index Object is available as a plug. Then you can just go ahead and add an ID mask. Shift A, search for ID mask, and just hit ID. Start typing ID mask, and it pops up. Okay, and um, you would just set the ID in index to one. All right, and I check mark into alias so everything looks nice and crisp. And you just plug in the index ob into that ID value. And so now what you're what you're doing is every th object that has a pass index of one, anytime that's on screen, that's going to create like a mask like a black and white mask that we're going to be able to use for our compositing. And then we're going to take that black and white mask and we're going to blur it with the uh, blur node, okay? And I just set it to these values here. You can set to whatever you want. And then we composite the two uh, things together. We, we take the, the original image and this mask that has been blurred and we feed that into a uh, mix node, a color mix node, and I set it to multiply in this case. And then I use the alpha channel from the ID mask as the factor of that. So um, it's very, very simple network of nodes here, consider, considering what uh, a lot of compositing nodes turn out to be. All right, so that's really all you have to do. And then you just render it. And as you can see in that original, in this uh, final version here, it behaves exactly as you'd expect. And the green tie laser blast and some other shots look exactly like in the movie, I thought. So, all right, so let's uh, review what we did here. All right, so we uh, added the background video uh, under background images, and we check more unchecked camera clip, and then we went to our video sequence editor, added that background image strip, added the scene with uh, Shift A, add scene, and then the main scene is the only one that we have. And we set that to a blending mode of add. We went to our rendering tab here and made sure that film was set to transparent. Uh, then we went ahead and animated our laser blasts. Um, we went ahead and every laser blast, we went to its object data and we set it to a pass index of one. Then we went into our uh, node editor and, oh, we went into our render layers and we turned on object index. We went to our, um, our our node editor for compositing. We created an ID mask 
fed the index OB into it, set it to the index of one, added our blur node, composited them together with the RGB, um, mix RGB, set that to multiply, and set the alpha channel to be the factor coming out of the index, object index, okay? So that is how to composite the laser blasts in, um, in Blender. So I hope that that helps you out, and my film is done. I'm just putting the finishing touches on it, and I actually hope to have two entries, one in the long film category and the short film category. Uh, of course, that's if I don't get drowned by Hurricane Florence first. So vote for me if I survive. Talk to you later. Bye.